Hello everybody, welcome to the Old Gold and Black YouTube channel, the Wolves YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel please for all your current and past Wolves content. Today we're looking into the past. It's uh, something that's been recommended a couple of times on my YouTube channel now, but looking back at old Wolves games and giving my uh, memories and opinions on them. So we're going to start off today with my probably all-time favourite game as a Wolves fan, the only final that we've really witnessed as a mid-20-year-old. And that's the playoff final, of course, uh, against Sheffield United at Cardiff. So without any further ado, it's going to be quite a long video, but hopefully you w will watch a lot of it and reminisce and put some of your comments and thoughts in the in the section down below for that. Um, but yeah, one of the great days as Wolves fans. Let's get straight into it, guys. So Dave Jones there, who had been uh, sacked as Southampton manager a couple of years before then, before this game. Uh, due to certain allegations made against him, which were proved to be false after that. Matt Murray, of course, great uh, Wolves, stalwart, Miller, Kennedy, Wapow. Now, interestingly, uh, just watched a slightly uh, longer and extended highlight. Mark Kennedy made that run two times previous to this goal, and Sheffield United didn't pick it up. But the relief that there must have been in the, in the stadium at that point, I can't appreciate it, only being 12 years old at the time. I didn't have to live through the Crystal Palace playoff game or the Bolton playoff game. I did have to go through the Norwich playoff games the season before and the capitulation from being so far ahead of Albion and everything and and losing out on that. But to take the lead five minutes into the game here in the, in the emphatic way that we did there with Kennedy's uh, tremendous finish. I think I remember coming home and watching it again that evening and seeing it, it register something like 70 mile an hour shot. So... Yeah. But what a great way to start, and then uh, this was 20 minutes in, then free kick, uh, sorry, corner, Kennedy flicked in, Ince with a flick on, and then Nathan Blake, 2-0, just to settle any nerves, because I think at that point, Sheffield United had started to come back into the game a little bit, there'd been that weird uh, header from Paul Ince that nearly went in as well, but we were in the game, we were, we were, we were taking our chances, and you know, as we've seen, as we've talked about so much this season, about taking our chances, uh, really, at this point, I don't remember Paddy Kenny make, making any other saves at that point. But just to touch on it as well, Sheffield United were massive favourites for this game, huge favourites. Um, they'd had a much better season than us. They had probably better players in Michael Brown and Phil Jagielka, just to name two. They were, but we had the experience of Ince and Irwin. And then the youth of Lee Naylor, Matt Murray, Julian Lescott. Uh, I think we had a really good balance in that team. Oh, this is the this is the chance I think for the Paul Ince header. So it comes back in, and Matt Murray with a great save. And then I don't know if they show it, but Ince tells off Matt Murray for giving away the corner. <laughs> Classic Ince. He said, "Why don't you push it over there?" But yeah, just shows you the quick reactions for such a big boy. Matt Murray to get back over to that near post and just touch it to one side. Really, really good uh, play from him. Tong as well. He was quite a good uh, little player, I think, I remember. Dennis Irwin, look at him. If he'd have... I think he's... Everybody sort of widely acknowledges that he should have really ended his career after this game, but played one more season for us and his legs had gone and really, really struggled to, in the... For a lot of the Premier League season, look at that. look how quick he gets over. Matt Murray as well. If you've listened to the Old Gold Club podcast last week on Christmas Day, talked about how he thinks he would, would have played for longer uh, if he was playing in this sort of era of player of uh, football rather than the, the era that he did play in. Because every time he was like, injured with his legs, he was uh, working on his upper body, and you can see there how heavy he every heavy set he was. Um, and that obviously just caused problems to his knees. Great flick on there, Sean Newton. Look at the space Kenny Miller's in in the middle of the pitch, and then three nil at the break. Wolves can reach out and touch it. That's the line of the commentary. Um, it's weird because I've seen Wolves go three nil up so many times. I think lots of lots of Wolves fans probably still then thought that they would mess it up even though I, I don't think I've ever seen Wolves blow a 3-0 lead um, 
Yeah, look at this. Poor defending, playing Miller on side, whoever that is at the right back position. He's had a mare because it was his fault for the Kennedy goal, really. Uh, and then it's his fault again, they're playing Miller on side. Um, yeah, just needs to get a little touch on it. Not the cleanest touch ever. And then into the second half. So Wolves, just, I think everybody was thinking if we can just start the second half well, don't give anything away. And then I still don't think this is a penalty. Ball gets played into the box. Butler does his best to get out of the way. Uh, he, that's not a penalty in my eyes. I think with VAR now, I think he probably would be given a penalty because it's hit his hand. And as we saw in the World Cup final, if the ball seems to hit your hand, it is a penalty. But he's doing everything he can. He can't do anything else to get out of the way there, Paul Butler, other than chop his arms off. Yeah. So this was the tur this was the big turning point. Even though it was already three nil, um, you know. If they got a goal at this point, the momentum would have shifted and they would have come back into the game, certainly. So, But you could already tell Matt Murray knew what he was doing. He's standing slightly to the left of his goal there, giving him the extra space, and then he knows which way he's going to go. And he throws himself to that side and makes the penalty save. Fantastic. Um, it's really funny that in a game that, you, that Wolves won 3-0 you know, and played so well in, that the goalkeeper still gets the man of the match. But it's such a massive moment. A poor penalty there, really. Uh, from Michael Brown, not in, not enough in the corner, not hit with any real venom, and uh, Murray does just has to guess the right way. Really, it's a, such a shame when you watch this game back again. Matt Murray, Murray at the time is only in his early twenties. If he could have gone on and had a full Premier League season, uh, you know, Lord knows what he would have done. He did. Of course, come back in two thousand six, seven, uh, and played really well in the PFA Player uh, Team of the Year and Players Player of the Year. But this is a moment that often gets overlooked. They should have had another penalty. This one, I think, was a handball. I'm not sure if they're going to show it again. But Kennedy, well, he would have been sent off as well. A handball on the line. He's very, very lucky, I think. He knows as well. Look at him. <laughs> it's a good save from Murray, and then comes back to I can't tell who that is. Well, actually, actually, actually I've, re I've remembered it wrong. It's bounced up off his thigh onto his hand. He doesn't really know about it. <sighs> Sheffield United fans, if they do want to put themselves watching through this, probably think slightly differently. But yeah, I remember um, again watching the commentary back the next day. They said that. Uh, their ability from free kicks was basically like having a corner there. Uh, free kick. Oh, penalty. What am I talking about? That was a good save. And then Page should have scored. Page should have scored there. But couldn't get over it. But you can see Sheffield United are in the game all the time. Good save. Didn't quite get a big enough hand on it to push it wide of the post, but enough to just um, knock it wide. I don't know if you can just see there behind the goal. There's a... An advertising order for a regatta that says you'll never walk alone. Uh, you won't be able to hear it on the video, but the very, very end of the game, and if you go back on to YouTube and watch the whole game and skip towards the end, the Wolves fans start singing "You'll Never Walk Alone." It's quite a strange moment, <laughs> um, but yeah, one of which you know sticks long in the memory. I thought that it might become a sort of Wolves song, but I think quite a lot of teams used to sing it in. in uh, the end of finals that they won in the past so this is the very very end of the game now Sheffield United have given up in fact this is the final kick of the game I believe Amos into the box Wolves get it away and then Ince boots it clear Wolves have done it um, I wish I'd have been older I really really wish I'd have been older only 12 at the time and but this is the first time I'd seen us being promoted and just thinking Wow, we get to go and play now against Man United and Man City. Well, not Man City, it's not a big team, were they? Liverpool, Arsenal, Tottenham. Those really big teams who are always in the Premier League and just getting to go to these different grounds. Look at us. That's why we need to get to a cup final, because look how good Wolves fans look in massive numbers. We just need that moment. If you notice as well, Neil Warnock had been sent off at half-time for having a go at the referee. Uh, so when he talks about class... And Nuno, but there we go. Inson Butler, the first trophy I'd seen Wolves lift. 
the first trophy we'd lifted since '88 uh, with the Texaco Cup. <laughs> yeah, what a moment! What a moment! And that that group of players is still lauded. Uh, you know, if you listen to the old Gold Club podcast, they have a lot of players from 2008-9 coming on, and they almost speak. Uh, well, they sound very jealous of the 2002-3 team purely because of how these are lauded as absolute heroes because obviously it was the first time they've been promoted there he is Gonsa Jack that's the only thing about this this highlight it didn't show that little bit with the uh, the thumbs up and Rachel Hayhoe Flint so the 2008-9 team are not thought of in the same light as the 2002-3 team purely because we had this one moment the one day the final and there was all that heartache before it whereas 2008-9 we were top of the table for such a long time that uh, it wasn't really a shock when we did get promoted anyway thank you very much for watching today's video if you've got any ideas about what game you'd like to see next let me know in the comments section down below and I'll try and do it for you and give you my memories of the game uh, and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more Wolves content coming up Spurs away tomorrow can't wait. See ya.